I'm Michael West, Technical Product Manager with VMware. This is an introduction to the VM service, which allows users to automate the lifecycle of virtual machines using the Kubernetes API embedded into vSphere with Tanzu. Our starting point is an already enabled supervisor Kubernetes cluster with Load Balancer. Administrators enable the VM service on a namespace by first creating a content library containing the boot images for the VMs, then assigning the content library and a set of virtual machine classes to the namespace. VM classes are used in the virtual machine specification to define resources for a VM instance. DevOps teams submit a virtual machine specification file to the supervisor cluster Kubernetes API. This causes the creation of virtual machine custom resources in Kubernetes. These are not the actual virtual machines, but simply hold the configuration metadata that describes the VMs the user wants to deploy. Users may also submit a VM service specification. This custom resource defines a load balancer service that would provide ingress to a single VM or load balancing across a set of VMs. The VM operator is made up of a set of controllers that watch for the creation of virtual machine and virtual machine service custom resources and reconcile them into the actual objects that they define. API calls to vCenter instantiate the VMs with the appropriate boot image, virtual machine class, and network configuration contained in the custom resource. The virtual machine service is reconciled into a Kubernetes service of type load balancer, and another network controller calls the load balancer to configure a virtual IP for accessing the VMs. Let's see how this works. The inventory view in the vSphere client shows a namespace called TKG with a TKG cluster and vSphere pods already deployed. The new VM service pane shows that VM classes and a content library were assigned to the TKG namespace. We are going to create a new namespace and provide our DevOps team the capability to orchestrate their own VMs through the Kubernetes API. Let's call this namespace VM service. We give our DevOps team the access to create objects in this namespace. and also assign a storage policy to control the underlying storage that can be used for object placement. Adding the VM classes enable admins to allow self-service but limit the size of individual VMs. We provide a set of predefined classes or admins can create their own. Guaranteed classes set CPU or memory reservations on the VM. Next, we assign a content library to the namespace. We are providing a set of curated VM images that can be used as base images. You will be able to bring your own custom images in the near future. This content library is subscribed to a URL that contains the available images. And that's it. Let's see how developers can use it. We will log in and set the context to the VM service namespace we just created. The VM images resource contains a list of images that are available to us. We see the TKG cluster based images and the ones from our VM images content library. This demonstration will use the CentOS image. These are the VM classes we added to the namespace. To create the VM, we define the VM class, the base image, as well as the storage and networking. The VM service will use cloud init to configure the VM. That configuration is stored in the user data field of a config map. This simple configuration sets up user mwest with an SSH key, defines some groups, and the default shell. In order to be used in the Kubernetes config map, we must encode it into base64 before adding it to the config map specification you saw in the previous file. Applying that specification file creates the virtual machine and the corresponding config map that holds the VM's configuration. 
A virtual machine service provides ingress and load balancing to your virtual machine. In this case, we are exposing port 22 so that we can SSH into our VM. Creating the VM service custom resource causes the creation of a Kubernetes service of the same name with type load balancer. Now you see that we have a VM and a VM service, but we also have the Kubernetes service, which contains the load balancer virtual IP assigned by NSX. Let's test our cloud init driven configuration by logging into the MWEST user with SSH key injected into our VM. You can see by the host name that we are in our new VM. And finally, back into the vSphere client where you see the CentOS VM in inventory. That information is also available as part of the compute information for the namespace and shows the image and VM class used. The VM service, providing DevOps on-demand virtual machines using standard open tools and the Kubernetes API.